Central afferents, two peripheral afferents, the dorsal and the ventral spinal cerebellar tracts. The dorsal tract is the information from our receptors. The ventral tract is what we call an efferent's copy. It's the backup. Okay? What it is is it sends information back about what's occurring down at that level of the cord. Okay? It's what we call the efferent's copy. It's the system of checks and balances. It's the yawn for the yin. Okay? Cool stuff. Here is the spinal cerebellar pathway. We already looked at this slide. Okay? Dorsal ventral. They're on the outside of the cord. Guess what? When people have myelopathy, guess what the first tract to be affected is? Spinal cerebellar tracts. And guess which fibers are first? Legs. They're on the outside. If their arms are affected first, it's a central lesion. I promise you. It's coming from the inside of the cord, not the outside. It's just the way it is. So what do we see? What are central cord tumors? Ooh, ependiomas. Okay? Things where the appendable cells in the central canal starts to grow. Okay? Syrinxes. What's a syrinx? I thought that was like a band or a song that Rush sang about. No. Syrinxes are dilatations of like the central canal in the cord. Very common. Person sneezes, has their head in the wrong position, right? Changes the intrathecal pressure. Whoosh, blow a syrinx. These are the people that have weird like loss of sensation in one area, but just for pain and temperature. And really, this is a big pet peeve of mine. What do they teach you in school, right? You're checking sensation. So what do they teach you? Use a pinwheel, right? Right? And I've seen people do it right through the clothes. They're good. <laughs> All right? <clears throat> pinwheel, right? What is the first fiber type to be affected by any kind of a compression neuropathy? It ain't pain fibers. They're the tiniest little itty bittiest ones, and they're in the center of the nerve. The first ones are the large diameter afferents, which are located where? On the outside of the nerve. So what's the first thing? If you're only going to check one, because you're in a rush, right? I mean, we're all very busy, right, in our practices. We're in a rush. I can only do one as a screening tool, right? What do you can do? Vibration. Vibration is great. Chances are, if they have a loss of vibration, they're going to have a, ch a change, if they have a peripheral neuropathy, in their pain fibers as well. The chances of just vibratory sense loss and no pain loss are pretty slim. You're looking at folate, B12 deficiencies, syphilis, okay? Really not, since we have penicillin, that's not that common anymore, okay? Um, or if they have just a loss of pain, how many syndromes can you name where people just have a loss of pain? Okay, capsaicinization at birth, right? Okay, that's one. <laughs> Do we have any others? Parsonage-Turner syndrome occurs in less than 1% of 1% of the population. Okay, it's a neuralgic amyotrophy. It's a type of brachial plexus tumor. Pretty rare. Okay, and leprosy. Okay, so if they haven't had one of those three things, chances are they're not going to have a discrete loss of pain and temperature sense. However, if they've lost pain and temperature sense, you probably don't need to check vibration, right? But the thing is, you're already behind the eight ball. Lots of people have mild compression neuropathies that go undetected. Why? Because you didn't look. Okay? Or maybe all you guys look. I didn't look for a long time. Right? But now, I look all the time. And you'll see that. And it just, it's just a matter of being more complete with the patient. You don't have to treat them any differently, but now at least you're aware. Oh, gee, Mrs. Jones, you know, you've got uh, cervical myelopathy. You know, I might wanna, not want to manipulate your neck. Okay, one, because you're a female. Two, because you're on birth control pills. Three, okay, because you've got central canal stenosis and you're a little ataxic in the lower extremities. You know what? We're going to manipulate your thoracic lumbar junction, okay, and we're going to do some acupuncture needles in your neck because that's way safer. And I can control much more of what's going on. See, you're letting me get fast again. You've got to slow me down. Just reel me in. Okay, so spinal cord. Spinal cerebellars are on the back, outside. Dorsal column on the back. Motor pathways on the inside. If you have hyperreflexia, they have a loss of balance. I can almost promise you. You might not see it because you don't want to look, but if I'm compressing from the outside in, I have to go through spinal cerebellar stuff to get to this. I have to. Is it going to be subtle? Well, maybe. It's when you make the person stand on one leg. Stand on one leg. Okay, good. Close your eyes. Good. Put your arms out. Can you touch your finger to your nose? Okay? And they're just a little off. It can be that much. They're a little off. Or you're watching them walk, and when they're on the right extremity, they have just a little bit of an extra waiver or something like that. I'm sorry. Cortically, I'm really screwing these people up, so I'm going to stand over here for a little while. <laughs> okay. Okay.